Okay. <laughs> Appreciate uh, everybody showing up. Um, since our uh, our last game, um, I had a couple chances to uh, to talk, and, and uh, first I shared um, my feelings about uh, about our team and uh, about the organization and representing the Twelves and my intentions of staying with the Hawks, man. And that um, that was uh, true to the bone. And uh, I want to make sure that that's, that's clear as things have shifted so quickly in, in most people's perspective. Uh, it's been an honor and a thrill to be part of this program. And uh, I've loved every minute of it. And uh, <laughs> you've watched me love it <laughs> in particular. Um, and it's, it's, it's exciting that, that there's such a future uh, uh, here. And, and you can see it. And it, we know what's happening. And, and uh, it's bright. And the club's got great places to go. And there's great chances. It don't ever happen automatically. There's a lot of work to be done and all of that. But the future is bright. And uh, following our season-ending meetings uh, with ownership um, in the planning sessions, it's clear that, uh, and for a variety of reasons, um, we, we have mutually agreed uh, to set a new course and uh, for the club uh, to, to take on new leadership. And uh, that's just a decision that's been made. And, and uh, um, there's a lot that went into that and a lot that went behind that. And uh, uh, for all my guys, I, I think you know how, how much I probably competed uh, for our perspective and, and our standpoint and, and, and all of that. I freaking didn't back off for an instant. And, and uh, What's going to happen now is the process will start to get new new leadership here, and that will be uh, on Johnny's Johnny's docket. He's going to get after that and, and make that happen with help of ownership and all that, and we'll, we'll be supporting them as much as possibly can happen uh, so that they can do a great job with it. Um, I, I'm so grateful to the coaches uh, that have been with us uh, for so many years. Also, all of the coaches that have been here for the years before um, that put up with my stuff and, and uh, found way you know, to bring it to life daily. And uh, I have great gratitude for that. <laughs> really, it was really, and I go, I go to, the, it's not just the dedication and the loyalty, it's the freaking juice. <laughs> it's bringing it. And I asked a lot of them, and uh, they were good at it. And I appreciate that a lot. Um, I'm so sorry. I'm so heartfully sorry for the families. Um, you all don't realize how, how deep this runs. Um, you know, it's just going next coach, next staff, what's going to happen, what's the future and all that. There's people in this thing. And uh, it breaks my heart that um, so many people get, get shocked and adjusted and surprised and all of that. And the children, and we have so many kids in this organization that we love so much and we celebrate whenever we get our chance. Um, it, it breaks my heart that, that, you know, we're dealing with that. But that's, that is what happens and that's part of this business and part of a lot of businesses. It's not, not unique just to us. Um, to the players that, that have been part of this thing, you don't probably know this, how, how deeply I feel about um, the NFL is about the players. And uh, we've not recognized that to my satisfaction. I brought it up at the league meetings a few years ago and probably surprised some people about it. But this league is about the players. And without those guys doing what they do, there's nothing. It isn't about the ownership. It's not about the coaching. It's not about the color of the uniforms or the going to the stadium. It's about those guys doing what they do and putting their, their body on the line so regularly. And it's not just a, a statement. It's, it's real. Uh, and to, we should always, I, in my opinion, understand that we should celebrate those guys because they are the NFL. They are this, this game that we love and, and the game we get to coach. Who, who would I be coaching, you know? Um, and uh, I have some, a lot of thoughts about that, but I really do appreciate it. And to see some of our guys here today, I mean, it means the world. It means the world. Uh, the, uh, I want to remind us, I guess, one time about, about the work. Yeah, tons of work dedication, all that hard stuff that, that we do with coaches and players to get to what we can get to. But it's really always been about the fun. And uh, Wags, you've always been the guy that always reminds us that if you're doing it right, uh, you're not having any fun at all. And uh, I, I appreciate you keeping me connected to that. It, it's pretty inherent to me, too. You know, we're, we, we're birds of a feather in that regard. But I also, uh, Bobby, is, is I appreciate you and, and T-Lock and Gino that have kept me connected to our former players. Um, it, that's a really important part of this relationship of being a coach, and particularly in this program where we've been here for so long and so many souls have come through. Um, having you guys with me all the way through this, this time, 
and you know, I always feel like I'm a little bit connected to those guys, and, and I don't ever want to lose that connection because I'm so indebted to all of the time we spent and the things that we did. I'm so proud of, of, of really seeing the young men grow up and take off in their lives and doing their things and owning businesses and families and kids and the whole thing. It's a, it's a great joy for a coach, but I, I appreciate you uh, keeping me connected to that. Um, I really want to, I got to thank Jody and, and, and unfortunately Paul not, but uh, the family w was really classy at all times and, uh, and they supported what we were doing. Uh, I felt this, the support faithfully throughout and uh, grateful for that. Um, it's, a, it's a nice relationship here with the ownership and it's as good as you can get uh, from my perspective. Uh, maybe harder on the on personal guys sometimes, Johnny, but, but uh, always so good. And uh, to Johnny uh, Snyder, you know, way back in the day when uh, I first got the job here, um, they wanted to know if I wanted to be the general manager. And I said no, but I'd like to hire him. And and Paul said okay, and we we got John on on board. And and uh, from the first moment that we really okay, now we're going to do this. We stepped off to the side. And, and I, I, I gave John a big hug and I said, we're getting married, dude, and, and uh, I'm going to help you be the, the greatest general manager in, in the history of the league, if I could. And, and uh, you took 14 years to get to it, and I'm so proud. I'm so excited for you to, to have this opportunity. It's going to be cool. And, and it's always been a great marriage, and uh, um, it's just unforgettable. And I'm just so grateful for that. Um, and going forward, I'll, I'll be your biggest fan now, dude. I'll be there. I'll be right there for you. Um, I, I've been blessed with, like, the rarest of best friends and uh, mentor, um, loving partner, the angel in my life. <laughs> this is worth crying for. <laughs> uh, Glenn, and nobody would ever understand how significant she had been through all of the stuff that we've been through and uh, how important she is. As a, as she's just been the angel in my life, and I owe you everything. Um, my boys, Brendan and Nate, you guys would have no idea how valuable they've been to me because they were the ones that would give me all the crap about what I was doing wrong or what I was screwing up. <laughs> they were harsh and, and their critiques were rash and, and the whole thing, it was perfect because I needed that loyalty and uh, they were the epitome of it for me. And I'm uh, forever grateful, they know, they know, but uh, I don't mind saying it to you. Um, because it's hard to be that deeply loyal. It's hard to tell people what they don't want to hear and, and what they need to hear. And, uh, it's, it's rare to have people around you that were willing to do that, particularly when you get in this kind of position. And it's so necessary to, to do well and do right. Uh, so fellas, I uh, love the hell out of that. Um, Jamie and the crew, uh, my daughter and, and, and all our, our, our husbands and wives and our seven plus kids. We got one on the way coming in April, uh, making Glenn and I the proudest grandma and grandpa you can be. Uh, really grateful to those to those kitties that uh, put up with grandpa's crazy stuff because you can imagine I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pretty whacked out grandpa. Uh, uh, <clears throat> and I just I just want to say this that um, one, one of the things I'm most proud of in, in, in getting here is way back in the day when uh, I called Tater and said, you know, hey, we got a chance to go to Seattle, man, and uh, how about we take a, take a shot and get up there and maybe two or three years they'll give us a chance and then they'll kick us out of here and uh, we'll see what happens, you know, but I'd like to, like to take the culture that we had at SC and see what happens. And uh, he said, hey, of course, Tater is all, always on board. Said, yeah, heck yeah, let's go. And uh, 14 years later, man, it's, 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 we're, we're both still shocked by that, um, and, but we're grateful for it as well. But, but what I am most proud of is, is that we, we took a culture that we developed there in, in those college days and came here to see if you cared for people deeply and you, uh, and you loved them for who they were and tried to find uh, the, the extraordinary uniqueness that made them them and celebrate that and not try to make them something that they're not and not, not to, uh, try to expect them to be something other than that but try to see if we can capture that, that extraordinary uniqueness that they had uh, and celebrate that with them let's see what happens it, well at SC we killed it and uh, we came up here and overall we've been successful for a long time I, I didn't think any way that this would happen like this I didn't have that vision but I'm grateful for it because what we have here we have an extraordinary culture and uh, um, I'm really proud of that the guys that are here know guys that come here and leave know guys that haven't been here before and they show up here they're shocked and uh, and really it's 
that happens because you guys continue to celebrate it and keep it going. And, and I'm able to keep calling on you guys to, to illustrate what it's all about. And uh, this is a very special place because of all of that. And I'm, I'm grateful for that. Um, so um, the, the one last part of that, that I wanted to say is that what it's always been uh, the, the, behind the culture is trying to help people find their best and uh, one person at a time. And uh, it works. It's real. And uh, you can feel it. And um, I'm, I'm really grateful for that. So we, we learned something here. It was a total experiment. <laughs> it was a dictator. It was, we, we had no idea. Um, but you guys are examples of, of how that worked out. So I, I, I love you and appreciate that. So uh, that's it for now. And uh, I'm freaking jacked. I'm fired up. I'm not <laughs> tired. I'm not worn down. Uh, you, you guys tried your best. You didn't wear me out. I'm, you know, it's the end of the season. I'm supposed to be, you know, go lay on a cot somewhere. I ain't feeling like that. And, uh, um, you know, there's what's coming. I don't know. I got no idea, and I really don't care right now. But uh, I do. Um, I'm excited about it because there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to study. Uh, there's a uh, there's some great discoveries that are going to come our way. And as my my all-time mentor Bud Grant said, not in so many words. Uh, there's there's rivers to wade. Uh, there's waves to catch, and there's mountains to hike. And uh, it wasn't exactly how Bud said it, but uh, I get it. And uh, that's some cool stuff that we're going to do here. Um, and uh, I look forward to all that. So um, with that, go. What do you got? The statement indicated that you're still going to be around the organization. You've still got some work to do here. What does that entail? Uh, we're we're going to figure that out. We don't really know right now. Um, but um, I'm grateful for the, the intention that, you know, that the organization has you know, to try to find something uh, that, that makes sense, um, you know, so we'll see. I don't know. What went into, you, what went into the decision to step back, or, or I guess agree to step back and not be the coach again? Why did, why did you agree to do that? Well, I, I competed pretty hard to be the coach, um, just so you know, because I, I just wanted to make sure that I stood up for all of our coaches and the players and the things that we had accomplished. And not, not so that we could be the coach still, but so that we could continue to have a chance to be successful and keep the organization going. That's what I was fighting for. So I, I, in that regard, that was what I was representing in our discussions. And uh, we got, got to a good part, a good clean spot where it made sense, and, and uh, you know, I went along with, the, with their intentions. Do you feel like the, the team could take this, the next step forward and continue? Uh, there's forward? no doubt. There's no doubt in my mind. Yeah, and they, we all know that. You sounded pretty confident Sunday and Monday that you would continue in your coaching role. Can you walk us through what the last couple of days have been like? Um, it just, just that we had the, our year-ending uh, meetings with ownership and, and uh, planning sessions with Johnny and just talking through stuff, getting ready. And uh, it takes us to the point where you, know, you get to where, what's next. And uh, this isn't about me being the head coach. That is, it's about this organization being successful and being uh, on course for the long haul of it as well. And I realize that. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm about as old as you can get in this business. And there's, there's coming a time they got to make some decisions. And so um, moving towards the future, um, if, if there's some way that uh, I can add something to them down the road, we'll see what happens. But um, this is a good move for, for them. And, and Johnny's going to take this thing, take the bull by the horns and, and roll. And uh, I, I, I'm so I'm so thankful that I get to see him have, take that next step and, and, uh, and watch what he does with it. He's going to kick butt. Coach, can you be more specific about that decision? Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what, what was no. it? Was there a disagreement? No. <laughs> I can't. To I'm not going so to. Very clear what do you miss most about coaching? Uh, the chance of being in one of those parades. <laughs> yeah. The thrill of a lifetime was being in that parade and for our fans and people and all that. And uh, that's. If it, I don't, you know, I don't, who's to say? I don't know what's going to happen next. I'm not sure about that. But uh, that pursuit to, to the greatness of the moment that you celebrate with everybody, eh, ain't nothing like it. So it's, it's worth fighting for. Is the right opportunity to become a head coach? I'll have to wait to see. I'm t it's, today's about today. I don't know that. See, what was different between your vision and theirs? Uh, that's what I'm not sharing. In, it wasn't because it, it, it wasn't <laughs> special to you, no. Back in 2010, when, before you were in coaching games. 2010, okay. You said you wanted to disprove the idea that you can't have you can't have fun coaching football this level while still competing like crazy and winning. How much pride do you take that you were able to do it the way you wanted? It wasn't very hard, you know. It wasn't very hard for, for us, you know. And, and I mean, that's just been the way we've always done it. But um, 
you know, it's been mistaken and misunderstood, I think, a lot that, you know, we like we missed the point, and, you know, we don't realize the sincerity of it. That ain't what's happening around here. That's not how we do it. There's, there's plenty of room to have the, have the fun if, uh, if you have an eye for it and if you appreciate it, you know, and that's why Bobby is so important as one of the, one of the players that always reminds us, you know, if we're not having fun, we're missing it, you know, and, and I've said if, if we're not having fun, I'm totally screwing up. That's what I've always felt. And so um, it's a constant. It's part of it. It's, it's part of making the environment that you work in li alive and, and, and uh, uh, sometimes uncertain. You, you, can't, you don't know what to expect from what's going to happen next. It's like going, okay, well, I'll keep going. It's like going into your, uh, 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 your high school class, maybe it was a history class, and you had a teacher that was really unique, uh, that the music was playing or there was something going on, and you could hear it as you're walking down the hall, and you couldn't wait to see what was going on that day. That's what this learning environment was supposed to be like, that every day you had to come in and you didn't know what was going to happen. And because uh, I needed to keep you at the very peak of your awareness and, and, and focus and all that. So that was just part of it. Was there a moment or a game or a player that you knew that that approach had taken hold and you knew oh, that it was working that's on That's a good level? question. Um, uh, no, I don't know that, Jen. I don't, I don't know that there was a moment. Um, there was times back in the day. I, I realized back in, in at SC, you know, that we had we had something special, and uh, because we were continuing to, we we won so much, they ruined me for life. You know, we, we, it's hard to imagine when you can win win three straight years every game, keep coming back, summer times, the off season, all that stuff, and it wrecks you. You know, like there, there's, I mean, I did want to say this too. There's never enough wins. You know, there's just never enough. It, 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 you win 15, you want 16, you want 16, you want 17, you want them all, you know. And, and that's, I, I've, you know, it's a curse, but it's also the blessing because it drives you such, you know, in such manner, so. Well, was there something in the NFL, like when you got to this team where you knew that your approach had taken hold? Uh, you, you, yeah, there, there, let's, let's give this the moment. If there's a moment, it was when we had the opportunity to play uh, New Orleans. You know, we're seven and nine, and everybody's dogging us and all that about, you know, you don't deserve to be there, and they're the world champions, and then we beat them right here. And, and we beat them in fashion, you know, in style. And, and uh, I, I think that was, that was uh, because we were talking like we were going to win that game, and nobody else thought we could ever win that game. And we went out there and, and put together, you know, a, a, an effort that was, that separated us, I think, and we were never the same from that point forward. So that, that, thank you for reminding me about that. Coach, how were you able to keep the culture evolving then through all the years after you established? No, no, you better ask these guys. You know, I don't know. Yeah, it, it's constant. It's a constant competition for me, and uh, just like everything else is, and, and so you compete on a regular, everyday basis. Brian Ayers and I trying to figure out what's next for, for the guys. How can we keep them going? And and you know, whether it was contests or, or, or shoot offs or safe places or, you know, whatever it took, you know, to, to just find ways um, to make it, you know, interesting and, and keep them guessing, you know, the teaching environment. It's teaching. So we're trying to keep the students alive and, and thriving and, and in the moments and all that. So that's a huge endeavor. Coach, can you explain why, why it was so difficult over the last two or three years to stay, stay so consistent? Two steps forward, maybe one step back. Is yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We didn't. We 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 lost our our, our edge, um, uh, really, and the, the 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 edge to be great, which was really how we ran the football and how we played defense. It wasn't as good as it needed to be, and uh, you know, y'all get tired of me you know, thinking I'm three yards in a cloud of dust. You guys don't get it, and I, I'm sorry about that. But it's all part of the whole cycle of what you do when you put a football team together. And we weren't as as clear. Uh, in the last couple of years, and you know, it was just three years ago or four years ago. The four and three years ago, I think we were first in the league in rushing defense and fifth or sixth in rushing defense or something. We had back-to-back -back years there, which was one of the elements that you need. You need some special qualities about your team that separate you and make you in, an individual. And we we kind of got in the mix too much. You know, we weren't we weren't uh, high-profiled enough in, in the cru crucial areas that we needed to be. So it was just always a pursuit. You know, we're always chasing it and trying to get there. When you go back and look at why you didn't have Yeah, yeah, well, I'm not going to share that with you. Coach, have you talked to the team at all? Have you dressed certain players? No, uh, uh, these guys, you know, we, we talked Monday, and, uh, you know, I said a lot of things Monday that, that I needed to say. Um, but, uh, no, I'm looking forward to seeing them as we go, go forward. When you addressed them Monday, did you know this was coming? No. Thank you for the last 14 years, Pete. Um, Appreciate that. What advice would you give, having been in this very unique position for the last 14 years, what would be your advice for anybody who comes in and sits in the same position? You want me to tell the next guy how to win? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Yeah, well, it wouldn't matter whether it's football or whatever. Um, to me, the, the, the essence of being as good as you can be is you've got to figure out who you are. And you've got to figure out that in, in a um, relentless effort to try and get clear about what, what's important to you, what uncompromising principles do you stand by, what makes you who you are, so that if you don't go through that process, you don't do the self-discovery, then you don't have an opportunity to be your best because you don't know who you are yet. And so it's really hard for our young guys because they're just figuring it out. But as they come through our time, through the time they get 25, 26, we, we see the, the development. But for anybody, uh, you, have, you have to understand what kind of player you are, you understand what kind of coach you are, you understand what kind of person you are, what kind of dad you are, and all the way down the line, to maximize your authenticity and be connected to that true essence of who you are. That's, that's what's crucial. Without that, you're going to be sometimes and you're going to be sometimes. That's why, you know, People don't. It's hard to be consistently successful because people don't even know how they got there. A lot of times, it just happens kind of along the way. The circumstances come together and all, you know. So that's that. That's the to me the essence of it. That's how I understand it. Why do you say a couple times that you thought maybe only three or four years? You'd have three or four years when you got here. If if then when you. When you got, you got the job, if you could have looked at, it, at what you ended up doing in yes. 14 years and a Super Bowl and all that, how would you, how would you have thought at that time about this one? Oh, I, 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 no, I'm, really, I'm thrilled that we, we've had this, this run. I really am. We've, we've, the, the level of consistency that we've, that we've demonstrated um, is, is, is such to make you proud. Um, it's hard to do what we've done. It's hard to win as we have. It's hard to be... Uh, considered a threat as we have throughout all of the years we've been here. When, when, no matter where we go on the road or what, what, all of those special qualities about our teams and how we play on the road, how we play on Monday nights, how we, you know, all that kind of stuff. How, we, how Gino showed again the, the great finishing ability this team has and the mentality that it takes to do that. Drew did it as well. I mean, though, all of those special qualities are you know, what, what makes it up. And, um, yes? Yeah, yeah. My favorite moment was standing on the stage at the um, in the, uh, in in New York and finding Glenn out in the crowd. That was it, by far. It, it. Pete, I know I asked you last week, but I'm wondering if you could elaborate on the yin and yang, as you called it, in your last year of coaching, rookie pro bowler, and obviously one of the best players of all time to be a pro bowler as well in the same year. Yeah, that, I, I I like the, the is, is that a dichotomy? I don't know what that is. I don't know what, what, tell me what that is. Yeah, I said yin and yang, and I didn't know what that meant either. Um, uh, but it, yeah, just to see the ends of the spectrum so obviously illustrated, you know, and and uh, but also to see Julian in, in between too, you know, and Julian's response, who was just totally devastated because he knew what happened. Like Spoon didn't know. <laughs> he didn't realize what you know. To him, it was just like, oh, this is awesome, you know. But but for a guy to realize he'd been around for three or four years and to, then to be recognized uh, as, as a Pro Bowler, and then for Bobby to to you know kind of absorb that thought again that I'm still on top of this thing and for the moment. I, and I know it's he's not that egotistical about it, but he he did recognize. Uh, I'm sure again, and with great pride. So it makes him who he is. It makes him a freaking ridiculous performer and all that. Um, but yeah, that that was uh, it was really exciting to see that, and it was just so obvious, you know. And, and I was in Mo Kelly's office, and we just sat there, and I'm just watching these guys respond. I'm just sitting on the on the couch there, and just watching them as they're, you know, realizing, you know, each other and themselves, and what this means, and you know, that was really really special. Why do you think? work so well for so long? Because it was the most important thing in the whole program. It, it's the relationship between the, the head coach and the general manager that have to make all the, this is my opinion, that, that have to make this, this, these decisions and have to put in motion the approach and the philosophy and, and, and how it's going to succeed and, and how to correct and get back, you know, course correct and all the things you have to do. That relationship has to be, to, in my opinion, and I'd seen it so many times in so many other situations I've been in, that there was just two guys, you know, they go get a hot shot from here and a hot shot from here and they expect them to go together, which they might make it, you know, and, and, and without the appreciation of what that relationship is, you, you miss it and, and you, you, you falter in, in, in the course of that, the exchanges that you have and the decisions that you make. Because what's most important that, that we are together. It, it wasn't the actual decision, is that we could find common ground and then move together and then go make it work as best we could. And it didn't always work, but we, we, we understood how we got there. We appreciated one another's input on the deal. And I had to say so, but 
Johnny made millions of decisions here because he was great at making those decisions. And so, in my opinion, we just had to figure it out. And I had to lean for him. He had to lean for me. And we, we, we were willing to, to put ourselves, the individuals, behind what the, the marriage was all about. And so, I mean, I don't mean to be you know, teaching other franchises how to do it, but that, that's what I think is the key. And whether you're in basketball or wherever you are in baseball, you know, it's those relationships. And, and uh, that's just so that you can maximize what each guy has. We, I, I'm trying to help him be great. He's trying to help me be great. And nothing else is, was important. That's the only, that was it. And so as screwy as we got, and, and you know, we have a kind of a saying, you know, you got to give your brother some slack because we screwed up. We made mistakes a lot, you know, and we had to cover for each other and, and all that. But we did. And uh, I, I know we're both really proud of that. You mentioned you're rooting for him now. How excited are you just to see what John does with this? Oh, no, it's, it's, <clears throat> it's why this happened. You want to know? Because I want him to have this chance. It's been 14 years he's been sitting there waiting for his opportunity, and he deserves it. And he's great at what he does. And, and now he's going to find out. Hopefully I find out, big fella. But, uh, <laughs> but um, and he, he deserves this moment, and, uh, and I was cheerleading for him. And if there's nothing else that w was part of this factor, that was the biggest factor from my input. Somebody, had input. Somebody asked the question, and, this, and I, I gave you the answer. It's, it was to help make sure that he could have this opportunity and he's going to go for it, and I would do whatever I could to help him be successful. Still. Coach, what do you want to be remembered for as the, the Seahawks coach? Or what's, what, what do you hope you can Roy Hobbs. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wish, I, what I'd like to be remembered, like, like Roy Hobbs. There goes Roy Hobbs, the best there ever was. I wish it could be like that. You, you had, I think, a couple Nobody years. has a clue what that relates to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you had a couple years left on your contract, I think. Was it your intention to coach out through? Yeah. I mean, I, no, no. Let me clear, clarify. No, it wasn't my intention. It's just that's kind of what's happening. Um, but I always thought we would maximize, and we would always go to the next, you know. And, and uh, David Brooks taught me a long time ago about five-year plan, you know. Keep looking ahead five years. Each year you go five instead of looking at what am I going to do at the end of this year? That there's always five years out there. And it gave, it gave me a perspective well back in time that uh, helped me understand how to keep projecting and not be so short-term uh, uh, you know, dependent on and judgment, judgmental. You mentioned the, the guys, the veteran guys connecting you to the past. What, what did it mean to you that over the years you have KJ coming around Cliff, Sherm, Marshawn, Sherm, Marshawn, Marshawn the, way, the way everyone stays Cliff, connected to it. You know, Mike B, Big Red, all those guys, man. I mean, those real dude, banger. I mean, so many guys, you know, that, that were part of, uh, you know, Mikey Morgan, you know, part of where we were, uh, that we weren't anything, you know, and then we were something. And we made, we made something special. The, the run that we had, the five or six year run to play in defense around here, was like historic. And it was because of the players and the scheme and the coaches fit together. We had to fit together almost perfectly to maximize all of it. Because we weren't very complicated. We, just, we did stuff really, really, really well. And that's the essence of football. But uh, we, had, we had a run of it that just made us kind of just bond in a way that I, it, these guys know. It, it, it'll, it'll never go away. It's just something that they'll, they'll live with, which is a very special part of the game that sometimes happens. Pete, what can, what can the NFL do better to, to celebrate players and value the relationship God, that you make? I appreciate you asking that question. Um, I brought this up years ago uh, to the league and, and right to the top of the league that – what the heck, Dave? I can go ahead and do this whole thing, right? The, um, <laughs> what, else, what else are we going to do? Um, I felt that the league could use direction to celebrate a new focus and uh, that they were missing out on and uh, because we're into you know TVs and games and playoffs and all that kind of stuff and, and uh, free agency and all the things with contracts and all the things that happen drafts and all that stuff that's all part of the league but the real part of the league that could give us real focus and direction is is celebrating the, the players that make this game happen and realize that and, and come to the understanding that you, you have no game without these guys and you have no level of this game without, without our guys and they deserve to be seen for that. What does that mean? Well, you're going to look after them. You're going to take care of them. You're going to see them through their careers the best way you can, make the decisions that always support their health and their welfare and their well-being and all of that. That's part of it. But then as they come out of their careers, what are we doing for them? Do we let them go and they just, they're, now they're on their own? Or 
Do we celebrate them from now on? Was it not worth a lifetime of support for those guys? And, and whatever that means. And, uh, and there are so many ways to do that. Um, when uh, Dave Baker was at the Hall of Fame, I talked to Dave about this. Um, you know, why could we not find ways to, to utilize our former players in ways all over the country and let them be ambassadors for the league and for, and for sports and for achievement and for manhood and you know, all the education and all the wonderful things that they can stand for. And just stay with them forever because they played the game. We got enough money, you know, I think. You know, there's enough money to do that and figure it out. But what we would create, why wouldn't we be creating superheroes for our young kids? I think you would. Something happens around the country, bam, here comes the NFL. And they show up on, on site, and, and they're like a SWAT team of, of support and love and, and, and understanding and all that. I just I thought there was so much to that. you know, and, and, and it would change the perception of the league from outside in of, that we understood what it's like to care. And I think the message of sending that and, and what that would mean, not to just to the young guys and the, and the guys growing through their years, but to everybody that watches it. Everybody's watching the NFL, so why not do that? You know? So I, I, you know, I presented it and all, and you know, it, didn't, it didn't go anywhere. But um, it was a cool thought, and um, you know, whatever. So that one just went, okay, what else we got? Do not have any input in your successes? No. I have support to, to John. I'm supporting John. Um, Whatever your role is now, Max, what role would you have in choosing the next coach? Say it again, the last What one? role are you going to have choosing the next coach? Do you have any input? Or no, he, yeah, he just has to, no, I, that's, that's not my deal. That's their deal, you know. Um, what advice, you had this perfect marriage, what advice would you give to a coach entering your role of working with John? Oh, geez, he's in trouble. <laughs> he has no idea what he's getting into. Um, I, advice would just be to understand how, the value of the relationship and how crucial it is because you, you are the team. You, know, you are with the, all these decisions and the, you impact so much from the salary cap and all of the, you know, the transfer of, of you know, players and all. You know, if you ever rem remember, what we did is we were going to compete at everything we did, every single opportunity, no matter where it was. That was right heart the heartline of, of the philosophy and you know, always compete. And so John at every single turn, and, and I mean, John, remember when we went after Marshawn, you know, and how long it took us to get Marshawn. It took us weeks and weeks and weeks to keep calling him and keep going. And I keep pestering him about it. Get the heck out of here. You know, leave me alone. And, we, and somewhere all of a sudden a conversation opened up. We had a chance, you know. And we, we knew something special was there. And, uh, uh, but it, had we just done the normal course of business, we'd have turned away and never stayed with it, but we kept battling, you know. And so it, it's competing to, to stay, to help each other be great at what you're doing, you know. And I mean, that, that, that's nothing new. That just happens to be, it's my relationship with John, but it's my relationship with Gino, too. It's my relationship with Bobby, too. That, that's the way I see the world, is that we're trying to help each other be as good as we can possibly be, whatever that takes, and, relentlessly, you know. And, and um, so um, that's what I would, you know, tell me to do. Maybe this isn't fair to ask, but do you have any regrets? Uh, probably is. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you have any regrets about anything? Like, from the last yeah, yeah. Oh, man. There's so many games. There's so many games. It's the, it's the games, you know? I mean, let's look at this season. You know, we screwed it up and, and made, made Jason have to kick a 55-yard freaking field goal to beat the Rams, you know, in the wind, in, in an indoor stadium that was windy somehow, or whatever it was. And, and uh, I mean, how hard can you make it, you know, and, and not winning the freaking Dallas game. It's, it, think of all the games we won in the exact same scenario. It's th I think it's third and two on about the 35 or something like that. We don't make that one. We don't make the fourth and two. We let them off. The, we had them in our minds, and it just got away. So, uh, yeah, I regret that, but there's... Millions of games. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. There ain't enough wins. You know, as a coach, there's not enough wins, and, and uh, we know right now there's not enough wins this season. And, and uh, it's 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 you know it, it's a big challenge about doing this work. If the, if the Bears have won, and you guys have got in again, do you think you'd be in this position? Making them, but not, making them not today. <laughs> <laughs>